So for most of this channel, I plan and expect to read short stories or single chapters of things, but we'll see if it shows any success. For tonight, it's going to be a bit of poetry from Adelantin Caledon by Algernon Swinburne. which is not very cozy. I expect I'll have to sit up quick. Who hath given man speech? Or who hath set therein a thorn for peril and a snare for sin? For in the word his life is and his breath, and in the word his death, that madness in the infatuate heart may breed from the word's womb the deed and life bring one thing forth ere all pass by, even one thing which is ours yet cannot die. Death, hast thou seen him ever, anywhere? Time's twin-born brother, imperishable as he is, perishable and plaintive, clothed with care and mutable with sand. But death is strong and full of blood and fair, and perjurable, and like a lord of land. Nay, time thou seest not, that thou wilt not see, till life's right hand be loosened from thine hand, and thy life days from thee. For the gods very subtly fashion madness with sadness upon earth, not knowing in any wise compassion, nor holding pity of any worth, and many things they have given and taken and wrought and ruined many things. The firm land they have loosed and shaken, and sealed the sea with all her springs, they have wearied time with heavy burdens and vexed the lips of life with breath, set men to labor and given them guerdons, death and great darkness after death, put moans into the bridal measure and on the bridal wools a stain, and circled pain about with pleasure and girdled pleasure about with pain, and strewed one marriage bed with tears and fire for extreme loathing and supreme desire. What shall be done with all these tears of ours? Shall they make water springs in the fair heaven to bathe the brows of morning, or like flowers be shed and shine before the starriest hours, or made the raiment of the weeping seven? Or rather, O oh, our masters, shall they be food for the famine of the grievous sea, a great wellhead of lamentation satiating the sad gods, or fall and flow among the years and seasons to and fro, and wash their feet with tribulation, and fill them full with grieving ere they go. Alas, our lords, and yet alas again, seeing all your iron heaven is gilt as gold, but all we smite thereat in vain, smite the gates barred with groanings manifold, but all the flower floors are paven with our pain, and yea, and with weariness of lips and eyes, with breaking of the bosom and with sighs, we labor and are clad and fed with grief, and filled with days we would not fain behold, and nights we would not hear of. We wax old, all we wax old and wither like a leaf. We are outcast, strayed between bright sun and moon. Our light and darkness are as leaves of flowers, black flowers and white that perish, and the noon as midnight, and the night as daylight hours. A little fruit, a little while is ours, and the worm finds it soon. But up in heaven, the high gods one by one lay hands upon the drop that quickeneth, fulfilled with all tears shed and all things done, and stir with soft imperishable breath the bubbling bitterness of life and death, and hold it to our lips and laugh, but they preserve their lips from tasting night or day, lest they too change and sleep. The fates that spun, the lips that made us, and the hands that slay. Lest all these change, and heaven bow down to none, change and be subject to the secular sway and tearing revolution of the sun. Therefore they thrust it from them, putting time away. I would the wine of time, made sharp and sweet, with multitudinous days and nights and tears, and many mixing savors of strange years, 
were no more trodden of them under feet, cast out and spilt about their holy places, that life were given them as a fruit to eat, and death to drink as water, that the light might ebb drawn backward from their eyes, and night hide for one hour the unperishable faces, that they might rise up sad in heaven, and know sorrow and sleep, one paler than young snow, one cold as blight of dew and ruinous rain. Rise up and rest and suffer a little, and be a while as all things born with us and we, and grieve as men, and like slain men be slain. For now we know not of them, but one saith, The gods are gracious, praising God, and one, when hast thou seen? Or hast thou felt this breath touch, nor consume thine eyelids as the sun, nor fill thee to the lips with fiery death? None hath beheld him, none seen above other gods and shapes of things, swift without feet and flying without wings, intolerable not clad with death or life, insatiable not known of night or day, the lord of love and the loathing and of strife, who gives a star and takes a sun away, who shapes the soul and makes her a barren wife to the earthly body in grievous growth of clay, who turns the large limbs to a little flame and binds the great sea with a little sand, who makes desire and slays desire with shame, who shakes the heaven as ashes in his hand, who seeing the light and shadow for the same, bids day waste night as fire devours a brand, smites without sword and scourges without rod, the supreme evil, God. Yea, with thine hate, O God, thou hast covered us, one saith, and hidden our eyes away from sight, and made us transitory and hazardous, light things and slight. Yet have men praised thee, saying, He hath made man thus, and he doeth right. Thou hast kissed us, and hast smitten. Thou hast laid upon us with thy left hand life, and said, Live. And again thou hast said, Yield up your breath, and with thy right hand laid upon us death. Thou hast sent us sleep, and stricken sleep with dreams, saying, Joy is not, but love of joy shall be. Thou hast made sweet springs for all the pleasant streams. In the end thou hast made them bitter with the sea. Thou hast fed one rose with dust of many men. Thou hast marred one face with fire of many tears. Thou hast taken love, and given us sorrow again. With pain thou hast filled us full to the eyes and ears. Therefore, because thou art strong, our father, and we feeble, and thou art against us, and thine hand constrains us in the shallows of the sea, and breaks us at the limits of the land, because thou hast bent thy lightnings as a bow, and loosed the hours like arrows, and let fall sins, and wild words, and many a winged woe, and wars among us, and one end of all, because thou hast made the thunder, and thy feet are as a rushing water when the skies break, but thy face is an exceeding heat, and flames of fire the eyelids of thine eyes. Because thou art over all who are over us, because thy name is life, and our name death, because thou art cruel, and men are piteous, and our hands labor, and thine hand scattereth. Lo, with hearts rent, and knees made tremulous, lo, with ephemeral lips, and casual breath, at least we witness of thee ere we die that these things are not otherwise but thus, that each man in his heart sigheth and saith, that all men, even as I, all we are against thee, against thee, O God most high. Hardly comment. 